welcome to episode three of the Frivolous and Frugal podcast. <laughs> it's a podcast by two sisters who love to share their fondness for knitting and the knitting community with a frivolous and frugal flair. And you'll quickly figure out which one is frivolous and which one is frugal. <laughs> anyway, heartfelt thanks to all of you who are our returning viewers. We certainly appreciate your viewing. Those of you who have subscribed, that just tickles us. So I didn't think we didn't know what to do with subscriptions. Well, we thought they'd only be family members out of <laughs> obligation. <laughs> and we're so thankful for your kind remarks and suggestions. We really do appreciate those. And we'd like to say hello and welcome to our newest viewers. We're excited that you've joined us, and we hope that by the end of the podcast, you will take away a nugget or two that you can share with others as we share our fiber-filled experiences. So without further ado, <laughs> grab your note-taking device. If it isn't the knitting advice you might want to write down, it could be the really poor dad jokes that we try to tell. <laughs> or, and also grab your current knitting project and your sense of humor, and let's start episode four off. Dawn, go for it. Let's go. I'm um, Dawn. I'm, well, obviously Penny and I are sisters. Um, on... Instagram on Ravelry. I'm Dawn Marie Knits. Or when you're in trouble. Or when I'm, when I'm in trouble. Yeah, everybody needs that good middle name, right? <laughs> Dawn Marie Knit and shut up. <laughs> Not that I ever got in trouble growing up. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Uh, nothing that I would admit to on uh, recording, anyway. Um, we also have a frivolous and frugal page or group on Ravelry. You just go to that groups tab and type in frivolous and frugal. You can't believe how many people tell me that they don't know how to spell frivolous. <laughs> really? so I think they must type in frugal or something. I don't know. Or it could be F-R-I-V-A. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people use the A and it's really an O. Frivolous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Why> <laughs> <That was bother? laughs> and then we have a Facebook page too under the same. So, um, And do you want to give them your, how you're? Yes. I am known as the apron lady on Ravelry and the knitting apron lady on Instagram. And I just have to tell you, I try to look at both of those at least once a week. It's just not intuitive yet. So I will, I apologize if anyone's waiting on comments. Um, they're still waiting on my 2013 taxes. So I will get to you as soon as I can. <laughs> In the order of priorities. Somehow, just doesn't the IRS, Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. No, so. uh, exactly. Well, good. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about are, let's see if we can put this little sign up. Our Kofos. So just so you know, at our undisclosed secret location for the filming of this podcast, we'll give you a clue. Our other sister's here. Yes! She, she refuses joined. to get on camera, but um, she lives in Iowa. Penny lives in Ohio. I live in Wisconsin, and we're somewhere in between. We are. <laughs> anyway, we're undisclosed, so no one tracks us down to go yeah. home and do housework. She does not knit. I mean, not at all. I'm, I'm pretty sure she doesn't even know like what a knitting needle is. But one of wait till she sees this podcast. She used the word kofo last night at dinner. <laughs> she did, and knew the proper definition. So we she think box. that is a cast-on, finished object between podcasts. So because we only film every four or five weeks, it makes it a little easier. Um, that I shouldn't say easier. We can get some smaller projects done between podcasts. So do you want to go first? Yeah, I will. Um, as you all know, I love to um, knit gifts for others. And so between podcasts, my first finished project, projects were two of the faux ball cable hats. And you can get the link in the show notes. I knit these out of Cascade Duo Eco. This is nice. It must this, have alpaca in it. Yes. And it is the slouch. There's the slouch hat. Here is the regular hat. Now, viewers, we're going to ask you a question. I am torn about what type. Here, let me put it on. Um, this is Fred the Head. I know. You want to know where Pearl is, don't you? Pearl didn't make the trip this time because she needed some surgery. <laughs> yes, for a couple of reasons, which you might see on my photos in Ravelry. She buggered up her nose. Okay, so anyway. I wonder if anybody else uses boogered. I don't know, but I didn't know that you could have contusions growing up. We just know you boogered your knee. Okay, so. We're in therapy and it helps. Okay. <laughs> anyway. We should be in therapy. We should be group. in therapy. Let's see. I'll um, we'll clarify that. I don't know what kind of uh, fur ball yeah. to put on top. Pom-pom. Do you like black? Do you like black? 
Do you like gray? Oh, I like gray so yeah. far. Yeah, that is kind of pretty. This is just plain white. <laughs> that reminds me of a bunny tail. <laughs> yes. I don't back know of those, do you Back think? when you were a calendar bunny. Playboy bunny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll, oh, yeah. we'll talk about that later. <laughs> These are black tipped white, which is kind of fun, I think. I like that one, too. But you'd have to be up close to see it. Yep. Or I have this black oh. and gray one. Now, Dawn's like going to share with you what we did just before the podcast. So take okay. a look. This is the the pom-pom right out of the bag. I ordered them on Amazon 12 for something. I can't yep. even remember. But what did you do then, Dawn? So we decided to take the blow dryer to it this morning. And look at the difference. So if you see Maybe how it you looks. can't see as much. Yeah, it is just much fuller, much rounder. Whoops. Yeah, um, you can see how it's kind of compacted. Yeah. But look how fun this is after you hit it with view. a blow yeah. dryer. And so yeah. you can see the difference when it's on the hat, oh, too. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, it does look. The little blow dryer helps. It does. I think it fluffs it up. So those were two of my Kofos. Okay. I like that pattern, and that's that faux ball, right? It is. The faux ball cable hat. All right. Faux ball fight, I think. Faux ball fight. Mm -hmm. We got to meet that gal, didn't we? Oh, Madison? she was so excited because her pattern was on oh, the was top on 100. That, day. Yes. that was exciting. She was at the Madison Knitting. Oh, right. Madison Knitting. That was Hill. last year. Mm -hmm. So Penny's going to put um, a shawl up. This was one of my finished objects. Um, that shawl that she's putting up, I think I was working on last time, maybe? Oh, and yeah, that may not be a Kofo then. But anyway. It doesn't matter. That is Loop by Casa Pinka. It's two colored. You can see that there's the variegated and then the punch of color. Now, I would do the shawl again, maybe. I tend not to repeat, but I think I would do less of a busy variegate. Uh, so, that, so that the pink pops. So now that'll go with a lot of stuff and it'll be a nice blend. And it definitely is a nice shape. But I've really been enjoying some of Casa Pinkas. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that looks nice there. There you go. You can see that a little bit better. I love the crescent. I think that's my favorite shaped shawl today. Other than the, the now the new long rectangular ones. But yeah, so that I used um, Knitted Wit, I think. Oh, it is You'd have to look soft. at my project page. I guess I could look at here. But yeah, it's nice. And you know what I appreciated? And I probably rant about certain things. When I washed that or when I soaked it, I had no color run. Really? The water was clear. That's nice. I when appreciate that. When an indie that. dyer can do that. Yeah. Do. So. And right. I'm going to put it up close so you all can see the very pretty stitch pattern. Yeah, there's that loop stitch um, in there, which was... Fun and didn't knit. you tell me that Casa Pinka has a wonderful way of just tweaking certain stitches yeah, to get she just a has. Effect? She's very creative. Um, she's a fun one to follow on Instagram if you don't. And okay. I would tell you her name, but I don't know it. And, oh, that's so right. I'll just say Casa Pinka. But I just have to tell you, Flat <laughs> Stanley does not. We, he is Flat Stanley. Um, <laughs> Is that what we called him? Flat Stella. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, we have Flat Stella too, but today we have decided to introduce to you Flat <laughs> Stanley. Flat Stella? Yeah, you'll see more of them. Okay, go ahead. Pearl, Flat Stanley. Okay, a little bit of Fred the Head. We, oh, yeah. We've got Fred names for everyone. All right. So All right, heads. so again, oh, I did yeah. two more of the Fobal Fight cable hats in that... Um, eco duo from Cascade and I have to tell you very soft fun to the touch and it would be for me it's in that realm of yarn that you're not going to spend an expensive amount because the person may not want to care for it like you would care for it but it's very much a nice yarn and so you can see the difference in the pattern slouch and regular again Remember and, <laughs> sorry <laughs> I, have a, I have a focus issue <laughs> <laughs> you have a focus issue. Okay, add that to our therapy list. Okay. Um, and then I oh, picked these I like that. Fun this yeah. fun little pom-pom for the top. In fact, I think that was your vote, wasn't it, Dawn? And you know, the new pom-poms you can order that have this. No, it's new yeah. to us. It may not be new to you, but it has the snap. I got to show so you So right when you put that on, you can, if I need to wash the hat, I can pop that off. Yes. Or I can change. I could I could have more than one color. You could. Well, right. that would definitely be, whoa, two 
frivolous for me. One is enough. No one needs more than one. <laughs> All right. She Marie. says that, and I have seven siblings. What's wrong with that picture? But she's the first, so there you go. I only um, have five, so I was cutting back. <laughs> five kids. Yeah. And I have the one. That I we... know. All right. Cool. Okay. Obviously, you may have to scroll down. Hands. I don't know what's next. Yep. There you go. Oh, you know what? My son. Oh, we love him dearly. I do. Yeah, I'm a little biased. So, He's of course, we live in Green Bay in the Packer world. So, his phi ed teacher had a baby boy. And Austin told him I was going to knit him a hat for his son. <laughs> now, I must have a concept issue. This is the Pearl Soho Classic Cuffed Hat. It's a free pattern by Pearl Soho. I swear this is the smallest size. So last night, Penny says to me, Dawn, that's an infant size. This was one that Penny did for her newest grandson. It's a so, Mm -hmm. It's a Hufflepuff hat. So. But there is a little difference. Um, I a think little? My... <laughs> this fit on Fred the Head last night. So this is, I'm going to have to redo a different one for... Yeah, maybe not cast on 150. <laughs> that might be a good place to start. <laughs> or size 8 or whatever. Yeah, this is so... the Hufflepuff colorway. I don't know that it's worsted. It's fingering weight. Yours so is fingering, but still, that's a huge the difference. size difference. Yeah. So maybe this will be for his sixth birthday instead of his first. <laughs> And uh, we're in packer season, so. Now, if I knit this hat again, I wouldn't do it in a self-striping because it just makes the edges down here not as clean. So, um, sounds like I'm making a new one anyway, so. Sure you are. Anyway, this is a Pearl Soho, and this yarn was Uptown Worsted Spirit Stripe. So our little knit shop got it in the packer colors and the, oh, the Wisconsin Badger it. colors. So. Ooh, they did get Wisconsin Badger? I yeah, might have right? to ask yeah. Miss um, Joanne. Joanne about that. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. All right. That was cool. another. And I have one other project that I have to tell oh, you see this. has been a good challenge. Dawn and I, at the beginning of the year, set goals for ourselves, things that we want to learn. Um, we, we've talked about it pretty much ad nauseum, but we are really technique and product knit, product, Process. product. Process knitters, thank you very much. Oh my goodness, and we haven't even had anything to drink yet. We'll talk um, slower. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so what we like to do is challenge ourselves to learn new things every year. So one of my things is I wanted to do two-handed stranded color work. I really like the philosopher rolls technique, and so that's what I wanted to do. Well, our local knit shop, um, Yarn Craven, had a class being offered, and one of my newest knitting community buddies, Miss Becky, talked me into taking this class. And the brilliance of the class is our instructor said, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to knit the anthology hat from Tin Can Knits. The pattern is free online, and basically you get to determine your own pattern. So we plotted and grafted our own pattern. Where's Fred? The reason we're doing either the hat or the cowl, and Anthology offers you both patterns, is because we're going to use this for our gauge swatch. So this was my assignment to finish this hat. I charted the pattern, used colored pencils and graph paper. Some people used Excel, and that's my hat. At this week's class, then we're going to knit the sweater Strange Brew. And I have to tell you, this pattern is worth every cent. Um, it's really not a pattern, it's a recipe. So you have it's lots of for? options. It's a pay for okay. pattern. Now, by the way, they have included this in a book. The week that I bought it, this converted to a book with, I think, like a 11. Heartbound? No, or an e-book. Oh, an e-book. Okay, like sure. a book of like 11 sure. patterns. And this is one of those patterns. But the brilliancy of it, without giving away too much of the pattern information, is that they have a chart that helps you to determine how to correct your gauge or what you need to do to get the gauge in which the pattern is written. I like that yeah. because sometimes I can't wrap my head around it conceptually, what I need to change or how I need to change it. And this is knit in Juniper Moon Farm in the Moonshine Fiber the, in the base, it is, it's it is the, yeah, delightful. the moonshine base, very soft, has a little bit of a halo. It has a uh, forty percent alpaca, forty percent wool, and twenty percent silk. I'd have made up some numbers if I didn't know. You would have. I would have just said twenty percent. 
20% yak, 20% camel, 20%. <laughs> and so how much money is in a checkbook? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it. 42.51. I think balancing a check checkbook is a suggestion. <laughs> My husband doesn't know how much I pay in overdraft fees. So with that kind of in mind, one of the goals that I had for 2018 was to brioche. Oh, so girl. I attended that Ann Bud knitting retreat, and I'll talk more about that later. Do you want to hold that? I do. So this was a brioche class that, that we it. took with Olga. I don't know her last name, but her on Instagram and Ravelry, I think she's Olga Jazzy. She was a brilliant teacher. This but this beautiful. was brioche in using stockinette stitch. And um, she was a brilliant teacher. And it was one of those things that I tore out how many times, but then eventually it clicked. Mm -hmm. So that was a nice uh, so pattern we got as part of the class. We got a couple patterns. But um, I'm liking this. I am too. So eventually then I'll go to brioche and ribbing. Um, like most people, like most of the patterns you see today are, is brioche ribbing. So. so did she explain the beauty or the benefit of doing it in stockinette first before ribbing? To learn to read your knitting. Ah, and then brilliant. get more complex after that. She also talked about fisherman's rib, um, which is considered a tuck stitch. And I think um, Nancy Marchant may have just put out a book on the tuck stitch. But yeah, I like it. Two colors. I used a Barocco, Barocco something, uh, ultra alpaca, chunky, on a size this 10, so it worked gorgeous. out nice. But yeah, you should, um, so, quite a close. few people in our that went took this class, and the different colors that people picked for their yarn was. I just love that when you see so many How would things. Flat Stanley look with this? So certainly you could wear it long, yep. long, or oh yeah. And weren't you telling me that you have? Are they consider the backside reversible? Yeah, it's a totally different pattern, but um, yeah. Oh, I like I it. We have to keep that one. So. Yeah, I think you should. It'll make your um, eyes pop. Cool. Not out, just pop. <laughs> I'm sure All that if right. they popped out, we have to stop the podcast <laughs> for at least for a few minutes well, to put it back after in. after I took a picture. <laughs> so, brought to you, our next segment is what on your What's on Your Needles by Gee Whiz. Look what we finished. Okay. So, Dawn, what's on your needles right now? So, I am doing... I should look at this. Well, yeah. Wait, wait, I'm going to do it in the order of that so that we don't get goofed up. Are you sure? Yep. All right. I'm trusting you on this one. Wow, Penny, a project bag. Uh huh. I this have is one a project too. Project bag we got at ZK. I have one. Penny's is a too. project bag by Hefty or by <laughs> Ziploc. So we do have a lot of fun with that. This uh, Michelle Hunter, oh. Knit Pro Hunter, started a knit along, and it is for a poncho, which she's calling Match Play. So my husband's daughter um, asked me for a poncho when. We spent some time with her this summer, so this happened to just come at a good time. I want to help you hold it. I know, yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but yeah, it is. Let's put this up. So Do you every... see that? Yeah, those are the side designs on each side of a center panel. And it's just kind of like a pearl stitch. This is a free pattern that you can get from her website if you get it before the end of November. But look at that <gasps> center panel. Those diamonds really pop. I think they pop because you're using a solid color, Dawn, yeah. to be honest with you. So Stephanie picked out this color. It is Sueno by Haiku, and the colorway is Caramel. It so is it's going to be two long rectangles with a, I'm going to think it almost looks like a turtleneck or a cowl in between. And she wanted hers a little bit wider, so I've just added some stitches. Um, Michelle Hunter, I think, is a brilliant teacher, but she also tells you in the pattern if you want to make it smaller or larger, how to do it. So um, I'm not keeping up. This was supposed to be, the front was supposed to be done this week. Yeah, yeah I know. Um, what, how do women get that much I don't, knitting I think done? she tells you that too. So, but Joanna. you know, the back will be the same. So I would think that the next couple of weeks is how to do the neck when you get to it. Yeah. I don't know that I'm anticipating, but this is lovely yarn, this Sueno. Oh, God. So, I like Sueno. Yeah. Very good. What's on your needles? Oh, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so mine, I have to tell you my project, lovingly, is um, Ivy Over the Door by Helen Stewart. Um, it was part of the, what do you call it? Shawl Society 3. Pretty, yeah. pretty. I think you saw Dawn's a few weeks ago. Um, I have lovingly dubbed this. It is a shawl that never ends. <laughs> It goes on and on, my friend. Just when you think you're finished and you get the row and turn, 
then you look down and you see that you have to learn another row because it is a shawl then. Anyway, so. What'd you do I, with the money? What did I do with the money? The money for oh, voice Oh, it went lessons. to your ballet lessons. Okay, so don't go there. Um, yeah, anyway, I love, I, it, the salad. I love it. I can't put it down. And I'm not even at 50% yet. And so what you'll see in my project notes is I've altered it because I was not going to buy a fourth skein of yarn for only 20 some grams or whatever that was. So she looks at me. I would have no trouble buying another skein. <laughs> what would I do with 80 them? grams of scrappy? So what I did was I modified it just a little bit and I'm going to do it in three skeins. You frugal little Miss Penny. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, you'll be able to see maybe at the end the difference between our shawls. Dawn used a variegated for the bottom. Yeah, this is And I decided just to use um, a solid color. And I'll tell you something else I did. I don't know if you can tell. You can kind of hear, I guess, Dawn. This uh, lower portion of the pattern is in a different dye lot you than the top. It, you can you? see it here, can't you? you can. But when you're, on it, when you're wearing it, you can't, you can't see no. it. So what I did is I decided to split that skein in half, modified the pattern down here, started with my other two skeins that were the same dye lot. Oh, and then, then you'll do the other end. With, yeah, I will. Yeah, that's, yeah. That was brilliant. But boy, when you're up close, you sure can't see it. Nope, you can't. Well, I hope people aren't looking through their phones at me when I'm wearing it. <laughs> They're going to see if it. If they are, they have uh, more time than I have. <laughs> All right, so wonderful pattern. I would encourage you to do it. It's beautiful. It's fun. And if I didn't love it, I wouldn't keep going. And I think, are we done with Helen Stewart's Shawl Society 3? I, I think, think the patterns so. are done. I did not yes, knit I think all of them this year. Yes, coming up next. Yeah, I think she's been doing some teases on Instagram. Oh, My next, okay. um, I got a little bit more done than the last time I showed this. This is the Evan S. Yes. Shawl by Susie White of the Prairie Girls Knit and Spin podcast. That's an audio <gasps> podcast you can get on iTunes, by the way. Absolutely. Her and Danny are funny, funny, funny. And I have to say that um, I did listen to their last podcast, and I think all of us need to listen to that to understand the ebb and flow of knitting. Yeah, absolutely. And how it fits into your life. So. And also from the paramedic side, uh, she poked herself with a needle. Uh, oh, <laughs> Drew blood. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so this, um, I don't know if I'm even halfway, but this is uh, Suburban Stitcher's Yarn. And Susie's pattern is for sale on Ravelry. Um, delightful to knit. I love the combination. This is the project I'm working on now between shawls when I'm um, either was doing a Helen Stewart shawl or our little knit shop is doing Mystery Shawl Mania. So I think maybe where this progress keeper was. Look at that, Penny, a progress keeper. That's amazing how they sell those. Okay. Um, <laughs> Where I was from the last podcast. I'm sorry, so. where do you find that in the this knit shop? I look forward to this color. I don't have much in this color. No, you where don't. Where do you find that in a knit shop? I would not know where to find progress. You guys may not want to invite her into social settings. <laughs> All right, very good. Well, Maybe by the next podcast. I could buy a holiday Ziploc bag if others might be in, embarrassed by a regular Ziploc well, bag. Well, if you wait, pretty soon the Halloween ones will be on sale. <laughs> I like the way you think. All right. Um, my other project on my needles is a poncho that my granddaughter asked me to knit for her. Uh, she asked me to knit the Cable Bear Poncho. And this comes from those Cascade 220 books. I like those books, yeah. yeah. Knits for Kids. Very cute little cabled poncho. She picked out the yarn herself when we were at Simply Sock. Oh, That's yeah. where she picked this out. I am not very far on it. Um, I, in fact, Dawn and I were looking at it last night, and I think I have a mistake in it. But essentially, it's bottom up, and I'm just doing the back panel right now. So I'm not really very far. What would you say? Maybe four inches? I would say. But um, I, this I is like a pattern. Color. Yeah. I and know. it's out of Cascade 220 Superwash, so oh, I'll nice. be able to toss it in the and be able to toss it in the washing machine. But what I will say, um, maybe the rest of you are better at this than I am. When I'm doing a cable pattern, I can't be out in public or distracted. No. I think that's probably where that error is. There's came quite in. a few projects that I just have to be sitting at the kitchen table yes. when it's quiet. Then the last thing on my needles, and you can see I just started it, is the inside outside cowl by church mouse yarns and it is just um 
all stockinette. It's a long tube that will ply, or not ply together, will um, graft together at the end. This is Malabrigo silk. Ooh. I know. And so I'm an Addy fan, Addy needles. They were sliding off the needles because of the silk, high silk content. So I had to go to wood needles. So um, I think I've bought three <laughs> pair of needles now to do this uh, cowl. And then, so it's half that silk. And then look at this. Half mohair. Mm, Woo! Mm, mm. I can't wait to see it. So, you know, mohair is kind of the rage right now. So we bought this uh, the last time we podcasted in the Chicago area from Elgin Networks. Yeah, They had one on. I'm a sucker for anything in a knit shop that is on display. Really? And really, I, I'm a sucker for anything in a knit shop. But um, and I, especially when you can get the yarn. Yeah, way, and it's nice, nice when they chat with you about what it was like to knit, knit it. Because that's right. where I bought the yarn for that cardigan, oh, that's right. too. So that's because it's stockinette, I can sit here and knit it um, on the podcast. Absolutely. All right. But before we move to the next segment, Dawn, what's on your neck? What are you wearing? A hickey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Okay, what? our mom. Our mom would not, We never came home with hickeys because here's what she would say. Um, our dad would say this under one of them. Well, if they're that hungry, we could, we could have gave them some crackers. So we didn't bring guys home because no. who would want that kind of, you know, scrutiny? So I really don't have a hickey. This is the, it's another Casa Pinka. It was her knit along. The, help me with it, um, crown oh, wools. Crown wools. And I love these long rectangular shapes. Yeah. And uh, we're definitely into to sweater season now. You and sport that season. well. And those are good colors for you. Yeah, I like it. Both of them faded, right? Were they gradients? Right, the, the yarn's faded. Yeah. So I went from like a dark to a light or a light to a dark. So I like it. Yeah, I do like it. I'm into these long rectangular shapes now. I am too. I like so, them. And what's, uh, what are you wearing? I am wearing a pattern that's not published. This is called the Empress, and it was created by someone who's at our knit shop, Miss May. And I believe on Ravelry, she's May Roberts. But anyway, this is a beautiful pattern that Dawn and I both like, and it was knit out of Mirasol. Oh, it is delightful when you yeah. feel it. So it's very pretty. I like it. I think she did a nice job on the pattern. Was Pico she edging. I think she is going to publish it. But okay. Yeah. She's been really busy lately. So you were a test knitter? Uh, no. It was part of our summer camp. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. We had a summer camp at Yarn Craven where there were a whole list of projects you did all summer long, and you just signed up for the projects you wanted to complete. And, of course, she had knit one of these. Saw it and loved yep, it. Yeah, I'd have to, too. Yeah. Absolutely. So it was great. All right. So you know okay. what's next. Oh, wait a minute. Not that one. Is that one next? No. Well, we're going to lose weight before we gain it. <laughs> we just got yes. our HRA results. I'll be losing weight this year. <laughs> <laughs> Whether we want to or not. Weight loss, finished products or finished objects. Absolutely. So, Nikki, that would be an F-O. I know. She's so good. We love you, girl. We never asked if we could use her name. It, her name really isn't Nikki. Okay, so <laughs> my this. finished object oh. was the Pearl Soho Knit Layette Cardigan. And this is for our grandson. It's a baby blue. What I really liked about it are the brand the new ways I learned how to do the cables. Now, for those of you who are accomplished knitters out there, I'm sure that you're going to see errors because I don't knit a lot of garments. I knit right. some. I don't knit any. But not a lot. A lot. But it was fun to put buttonholes on both bands. I would never done that. So on the, the side that is going to be the button hole, you just tuck it up and tidy it up. On the opposite side, you use those drop stitches to attach your button. Oh, that great. was a new okay. technique for that. me. So anyway, this is um, the little man's sweater for Christmas. I want pictures of that. That'll be amazing. Oh, he, well, he's the cutest grandbaby he around. Is. Until and grandson, I should I have say. One. Until I probably won't have one. Okay. <laughs> um, do you you had a finished object, too. Oh, yeah. So, so this is, is this the, the second, this must have been our first, is that the first shawl in our mystery shawl mania at Magpie's Cottage in Sheboygan Falls? This is a pattern um, called Therapy by Laura Ayler. In the Ohio Buckeye colorway. In the <laughs> Ohio <laughs> Buckeye I'm colorway. telling you, this is an Ohio so, Buckeye colorway, just saying. Three color shawl. Here, let's do this first. Okay. 
started off with the, when I started off with this gray, and then you can see it kind of fades, you do some stripes, and then you have these just stripes and lace sections. And then my solid color, the one I used, not the solid, the main color was this variegated, and mm -hmm. then it goes to the red. So I used Julie Aslan's, do you probably say Lisa, do you think? L-E-I-Z-U, Lizu? I don't know. It's I've never French used Julie maybe? Aslan before, but oh, you guys, it's amazing. No bleeding again Ooh, when I um, excellent. blocked it. So this is gorgeous. She must have very gracious skeins because usually by 100 gram skeins, right? Yeah. So I thought afterwards I was going to try to weigh to how much I used it each. So after I did this dark gray, when I was done with it, I weighed the skein and it weighed 100 grams. Oh. So it had to be 100. And, yeah. I mean, a very gracious skein. Yes. If you've not knit with this, um, I think she's an indie dyer out of Canada. Delightful, delightful, delightful. Is there a reason there's a straight pin in here? Oh, because I was trying to hide the tail. Oh, okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, let's look at that again. Thank you for pointing out that flaw, <laughs> Penny. Okay. All right. Oh, I think you... I use that when I put it on the dress form, too, oh, to hold it in a place. Absolutely. Okay, I just okay. didn't want to take it out and have something unravel. All right, what's next to here? I'll fold that up while you... Um, Actually, it's going to be your vanilla latte socks, because oh, yeah. I only had one finished project this time. Okay, wait till you see these. These are fun. <laughs> Look at Flat Stanley can sport some socks. He sure can. We'll keep him around. Not replace Pearl, but keep him around. So, you know what? I'm going to hold one up. Okay. These are fun. I forgot where I got these set blockers. But this was a colorway we bought at Zombie Knit Apocalypse 2018. And if you can see, the colors are the same, but the striping is different. Um, Show Me Yarns designed a colorway for each of the two teams. And so when you bought her... Yarn, you got 250 gram skeins. So, you know, like the yellow's more prominent on this one where I think maybe the blue there or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of fun. They're not identical, um, but they definitely go together. You probably see it most in the toes. So, yes. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, so then I just did, um, you know, contrasting heels, toes. And I bet I was supposed to do a contrasting toe here and forgot. But these were hand knit, uh, size one, 64 stitch. And I used the vanilla latte. Um, pattern mm -hmm. and I think that's a free one but don't quote me on that I can't so, remember I think I'm gonna keep these for me I think you should yeah they're cool. sassy yeah, don't they you are think? sassy and um we make these deals now or these we laugh we, we take an oath every time we leave a knitting retreat that all the yarn we buy at that retreat we have to knit before we go back the following year or we can't buy any yarn that's Ooh. one for me. I know, and I'm way Nine behind. to go or whatever. It's probably not nine, but wow, we have a lot of knitting to do. We do. And then I we just took the same oh, kind of agreement when we took, went to the Ann Bud retreat. So, wow. Yowza. Anyway, is that it? I think it is. Okay, now what you're going to do is wait gain. Nope. Somebody had a weight gain oh, this time. Oh, you guys. Time. I... She bought some yarn. I'm I give conflicting you. information on podcasts. I say, I'm Do not going to show you new yarns that I bought until I've knit with them. But you guys, you can't you've with got to feel. Yourself. I wish you could feel this. I wish this was 3D. Can you I do too. One? I can. So we met Amy Watts from Watts Up Yarn. A lot like a light bulb Watts. And she was wearing a shawl in this colorway. And I don't know if you can see it's a speckle. So, and she calls it Skull Candy. And... The shawl was beautiful, so I just asked her if she could do some contrasting solids. So um, I emailed her after the retreat, and she was so good to tell me about the, I think the base I wanted to use initially, she thought wouldn't take the speckle as well as this base. You guys, this is cashmere, or merino cashmere silk. To so these are just complementary colors. So if you have any suggestions for a three color shawl, I would love to hear them. Um, Amy at the Knit Shop recommended Goldfish Memory. So I haven't Ooh. done that one. That's another Casa Pinka. I haven't but, seen um, that one. I haven't really scoured Ravelry yet. But oh, is that just unbelievable. It so is. she also sent the cute progress <sighs> markers that are the, a light bulb and stitch markers. But she sent high resolution pictures to me through the email to see if I liked them before she sent them. So I really would encourage you guys to look at her. She's a new indie dyer um, based out of, I believe it's, I'm not going to say, it's California. I don't know what part of California. 
So what's up, what's Yarn up, Coming? Yeah, Yarn Co. Dot com. Yes, she says Southern California in there. And I'll put oh. that in our show notes. Yeah, we'll so we'll link. we'll link that. And you know when you meet these dyers and they're delightful, you just want to buy yes, all their stuff. Absolutely. So the other thing I bought. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> I wish oh. they, they, it's actually being picked up pretty good. The yes. depth of this yarn coloring is unbelievable. This was knit or dyed by Yarn Carnival. It's a husband wife team out of Texas who came up to Wisconsin. <laughs> and then um, the gal who the dyer is brilliant. She knows her colors and how many different colors this was dyed to get that depth. And then she recommended this, this one as a complimentary. So this dark blue one is called Thought and Memory. And then this one, which the camera's kind of blown out. It's white with just a little bit of blue in it. And that's called Droplet. Very gentle. So again, any subtle. two color that high contrast, if you have any ideas for shawls, um, I would appreciate it. Delightful. That'll again, be a beautiful shawl. How fun to meet these dyers. And then the last thing, and I, it was my first Amba retreat that I went to, but I guess she always asks for one of the dyers to dye a, I don't know, exclusive to the retreat colorway. So Jeanette and her husband from Sun Valley Fiber, Yarn, which is in Wisconsin. Look at that color. They called it Crimson Leaves. That is. And then Ann yeah. Bud designed a cowl pattern. Oh, I didn't realize yeah, it that. It was free. How to nice. Go with it. Yeah. I can't wait to hear more about the retreat because I think that'll be fun. I could just sit here and fondle it. That's I know, but that's probably not something you should do in public. Okay, <laughs> let's so keep this I, moving. I may have put just more yarn there, but that's what we're going to start with. Okay. I know, because after all, Steve gave you permission. By the way, if you haven't watched it yet, Dawn posted her interview with Steve. Yeah, that's that's the I've uh, got some nice responses from that. And thank you um, for the kindness. Yeah, the kindness. Because some podcasters have not been getting kind things said about their spouses for those interviews. So we were a little hesitant to go live with it. But we thought we would try it, and we've received nothing but... But positive. Yeah, they said he was a nice guy. He is, he a, is nice a nice guy. guy. Yeah. He would swim him. through shake and or shark. No, shark infested waters to bring you a glass of lemonade. Yes, he would. He would. That's Steve, we love you. Yeah. All right. He doesn't watch the podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> Our next segment is where to knit and so Dawn and I have been watching our campuses to see what our students faculty and staff are wearing now that we have a little bit of crispness in our air you're actually a little bit colder than we are yep. so I was sharing with Dawn what I've seen on our campus is oodles of hand knitted or I'm going to say probably some machine knitted hats. Uh, what do you call them when you just buy them at the store? Commercial. <laughs> Commercial hats. We're seeing a lot of those. We're still seeing the fur pom-poms. In fact, one of my students came in yesterday and had two little um, oh, no, black fur pom-poms on the side of her bulky gray, light gray knit hat. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, and I asked her if I could take a picture of her, and then I forgot before she left my office. Oh. So anyway, but we're I'm seeing that I'm still seeing the infinitive infinity scarves and the big bulky scarves. I bet I counted ten or fifteen just in the last couple of days, and then the gentleman hats. I'm not seeing gentlemen wear scarves yet, and the other thing I'm seeing on our campus is our girls are wearing those big oversized sweaters, the knit sweaters you know, yeah. that are like the mid-thigh tunic length. So I am seeing that. I'm trying to see the of me in a large, <laughs> oversized knit. Or me. Uh-huh. So. They'd have to put a sign on the back. <laughs> Wide load. Anyway, so... um, <laughs> Well, give everybody a heads up before I round the corner. Yarn I'd have to buy? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just have to say that I had a little sticker shock. When I bought my yarn for my strange brew sweater. Oh, oh you had a little frivolous yes, run. Because didn't you? of my size. Uh, and I quote you, I said, Oh, dear Jesus, I'm going to have to wear this every day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> anyway, oh, oh, my good. Anyway, so enough of that. It's worth it, though. That Juniper Farm. Juniper Moon oh, Farm is delectable. I love it. In that moonshine base. Why so do I anyway, think I knit something with Juniper. I don't know. Uh, Tenzing. 
Was that their fingering weight maybe or DK? I don't know. It's the first time I've ever knit with it. I could have just made that up. You could mm -hmm. have. Well, that now, might be illegal. I know. And you wouldn't do that because you don't have that gene, which is why you wouldn't make a U-turn last night. I cannot believe it. I squealed anyway. my tire though. You did. Yes, I didn't make did. a U-turn, an illegal U-turn, because I didn't think I could get my minivan <laughs> to do a U-turn in two lanes. And they made fun of me. Yeah, my siblings. I can't my believe sisters it. Hello. We're supposed to love me. We do. They do not. Okay. All right, what's going on? Have you seen anything on you your know, campus? I have to check out. We're, we're cooler. Like, it was 30 degrees when I left yesterday to come here. We're at peak color change. Mm -mm -mm. In Wisconsin, that's not considered cold. So they're not People are still wearing shorts, and I, so I'm walking around campus on Friday looking for something that's knitted. Nobody's wearing them yet, so maybe in a month's time I'll be able to. And then we're going to ask our niece who's going to college in Chicago and our other niece who's going to Chicago, or not going to college in Tennessee, to maybe see what's going on on their campus. Um, yeah. And, but, you know, in Wisconsin, same with Ohio, we are going to see lots of knitwear come out um, for the winter season. I think so, so, too. And we have yet to have snow fly, but I'm sure it's not far off. Woo! So. Somebody had flurries the other day. Our yeah. sister did. I had, had flurries. snow flurries before what? we did. I can't wow. believe it. So, yeah. what's up, Dawn? You've what's had happening? a very busy week or oh, month. Oh, what's up? Yeah, so has it been two weeks? We went to... <sighs> uh, Five of us from our little knit shop went to the Ann Bud Knit for Fun retreat, which was held in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Sturgeon Bay is part of the Door County Peninsula. So beautiful. Um, we were taught by um, three different teachers. I took a brioche class with Olga Jazzy. If you get a chance to see her, she is a phenomenal teacher. Phenomenal. Um, she also had this cool thing she wore around her neck that she could put her iPhone in. And so she could knit and project to the screen. What? That was so nice to say, you know, she did excellent drawings too, but it was nice to see the knitting in process. I'm a visual, I think I'm a visual kinesthetic learner, but um, oh, that was amazing. She was delightful. I would take, I'd love to take some classes with her. I also took a Design Your Own Fair Isle mitts class with Susan B. Anderson. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody knows um, Susan. She and her son have the yarn company, Barrett Wolko. And it was interesting to learn how to do corrugated ribbing, the Laffian braid. Um, she had lots of examples and little hints on um, different ways to hold your yarn for stranded knitting. Uh, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, if you want to feed both yarns from one side or the other side. And um, that was amazing. Um, I, I'd like to do some, I think, fingerless gloves with some of that corrugated ribbing along the bottom. Ooh. So I'd like to try that. And then my third class was with Laura Nelkin. She's from the Albany, New York area, I believe. She's another good one to follow on Instagram. Um, she is really known for her beading. So I took a class called Beading 101, and we learned various ways to add beading to existing patterns oh, or yeah? um, some of her patterns. She had lots of things for us to look at that had beading. Um, and so we talked about different sizes of beads, um, what to look for when you're purchasing them. So that was um, really, really good. Those were excellent teachers. So, and then they had an amazing, for, for a little retreat, I think there were 90 people at the retreat. Oh, wow. The vendors that they brought in were amazing from all mm -hmm. over the country. I should have looked this up, but the gal from Boise, Idaho, who does Luxadora, Luxadorna, yeah. She does all one, the 100% cashmere. Spectacular. And then her, another gal from Boise, I assume they're friends. Um, I don't Jane, know who she what is. is. That? Jane So Knits. Jane, we'll put it in the, the show notes. She had some um, pretty things as well. So, um, and then of course, Leading Men, Fiber Arts was there. And they are one of our favorites. Oh, they Andy are. And Steve we are really delightful. like them. Um, Lots of yarns to choose from, lots of great ideas, lots of things knit up in their yarn so that you could see mm -hmm. um, there. So, yeah, we... And Sun um, Valley Fiber. Sun Valley there. Fiber was there. They're so... You Jeanette know, Sun, and her husband oh, are amazing. Oh, aren't they personal, yeah. cordial, love them. Yep. So, for a, little, cool. for a little retreat, I was amazed by the marketplace. Isn't that neat? Yeah, that was neat. So, 
Yeah. So that was another perk. So that leads very nicely into... Um, oh, do you want to talk about your retreat? Oh, you know, I should. Um, our little yarn craving yarn shop has an annual retreat, very low key. It's really about knitting and the community. Yep. So I went that to that the same time you were at Ann yeah. Bud. So I couldn't have gone to Ann Bud. But I have to say, again, it was a nice time to get to know my fellow knitters. Yep. Priceless. It is priceless. So we knit through the Ohio Buckeyes game together, some of us. And the facility that we go to is a Catholic retreat and renewal center. So it's beautifully placed next to a pond, a large pond, plenty of room to walk. So it was just a delightful weekend. So it was, it was from Friday night to Sunday. I'd like yeah. to be able to go to that sometime if um, Next year, next I kept telling them they had a, a public viewing or a public showing of not public viewing. Public that's viewing. That sounds like a funeral. <laughs> My gosh. Well, what do you call it when you watch the podcast? Don't you view oh, it? Maybe. Just when you <laughs> said that, I'm thinking, you buried somebody at your retreat? Or did yeah. you bury yarn that you didn't want? <laughs> Um, um, I'm not going to say uh, on a recorded um, podcast, <laughs> but anyway, it was fun. They watched the podcast and gave feedback, which again is helpful. Very helpful. You know? Yeah. Because we're kind of new at this and we'll stay new at this for a while, I'm sure. Yes. But I think we also have an, another bit of news about what might be happening in the summer of 2019. We have a delegation oh, going yeah. to... ZK 2019, Woo! the zombie knit apocalypse held in Rochester, Minnesota. We went last year for the first time, and it's four or five days of just really intense time to knit mm -hmm. and hang out with friends. And so we all got our devices ready, and the minute that those registrations went live, we all um, got in. I believe that letter said, I think there's 200 spots, and if That's I remember it. right, 175 spots were taken in the first 10 minutes. Ooh. Three of our people dislocated their fingers by hitting the screen so many times. <laughs> I just kept hitting refresh, refresh, refresh. Um, in fact, we were coming home from Austin Senior Pictures, uh -huh. and it was getting close to the time. And so I had to just pull over into a parking lot so that I could be online when that happened. And he did not quite understand that. So he thought maybe that was pizza little... was more important. You think? But... Yeah. Well, but I did. I literally kept sitting there hitting that refresh button until the magic uh, moment happened. So cool. I wonder if insurance would pay <laughs> for the would dislocation. Pay for that. Or I'd, I'd have to come up with some better story how I dislocated as opposed to sure I, was, can... <laughs> I was hitting my screen on my phone to get into a knitting retreat. Which I... reminds us, we can't take Penny publicly yesterday at a restaurant. Oh my goodness, we're doing that even. on you know that screen thing on your table that you can pay. She goes to sign her name, and she goes to dot the I and hit that screen so hard the entire machine reset. <laughs> it's all part of being an Ohioan, a Buckeye, because the band dots the I just like that. So I've, yeah, I've acquired that. that practice since living in Ohio. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just trying to acclimate. Hey, can, can I have a squirrel moment? Yes, I just absolutely. Saw these. Joanne from Aww. Magpies is really doing all she can to support our podcast. Which, Miss Joanne, you know we love you. We love I you hope you know that. So... She gave me these. So oh. for frivolous and frugal, this is a little hundred dollar bill. And this is a penny. And she got one of the guys she knows to drill through a penny. Look at that. Is that not the cutest? Oh, and I forgot she made me that bracelet too with some she frivolous did. and frugal stuff. I'll bring that next time. But how delightful. I so know. um I now have progress keepers. I suppose I'm supposed to share one with you, but since you don't use them, I'm keeping them. Well, you can, because that might remind you that there's value in being frugal. All right. A and little then, bit. Um, so next what's is, on your sock machine? So, again, I have the Earl Bacher Gearheart Speedster. These socks were knit on the 64-cylinder. Um, the ribbing. The yeah, I did everything on the sock machine. This is West Yorkshire Spinners. I think it's color 802 or pink. It is a really nice yarn it to go is. through the... To go through the um, machine, I'm getting better at them, but um, my goal was to knit like four pair a month. I'm not quite there yet, um, but yeah, that's one pair. Um, this pair, and I know it looks pink. Wise looks a lot like the other one. This is with the blue Doxy Dye Works. Laurel from Blue Doxy Dye Works. Hello, Miss Laurel. This was a pink colorway with a little bit of green in it. I can't. I couldn't find a name on it, but um, oh. Hi, what? No, what was the name of her? 
This is one of her bases that may be one of the most delightful yarns through the sock machine I've knit yet. Really? It didn't hang up. It didn't. Oh, it was just amazing. Ooh. So again, what I'm trying to figure out is I knit these for a smaller foot, but I didn't have sock blockers that were smaller. So that's why they look wonky. Um, but I'm getting better at the heels. Absolutely. My next are. goal is to do more contrasting cuffs, heels, and toes. And then wait till you see this colorway, you guys. <laughs> Look at these. <laughs> this yarn was um, from Twin Mommy Yarns. She did a trunk show at Magpies earlier this summer. This is agate hunting on Lake Superior for a colorway. Oh my gosh, this went through the machine. So if, if you're not into the sack machines, Circular sock machine knitters have crank-ins. So as we have knit-ins, um, so we did a mini crank-in. There were three of us. <laughs> it's pretty mini. But we're trying. We're all trying to learn how to use our machines. So, um, yeah. I think those are very Guys, pretty, this too. yarn is unbelievable. Look at those colors. So Twin Mommy Yarns. And she is great to follow on Instagram, too. She has some great colorways. And I will put it in the show notes. Um, and on my Ravelry page, the exact base. Um, I'd have to make it up if I came up with it. Oh. it it's got to be eighty, at least eighty twenty, I would think, um, oh, for wait, socks. Yeah. So very nice. Yeah, very good. Very very nice. All right, as we draw to a close, we have a very special pre wrap up presentation. So in some of our discussions together as sisters, we often talk about our our three P's of knitting projects, purpose, and product. And so we were talking about how if the purpose of your project, project that you've chosen is to give to someone who may not work or take care of your yarn like you would, you probably want to give them a different type of fiber, something that they can care for and something that they can use yeah, over and over. Yeah, wash machine and dryer. Absolutely. Yeah. But then there are others of us who our product is something that we are going to wear. We don't mind caring for the fiber. So Dawn, my frivolous sister, <laughs> did a comparison of six or seven different yarns. So she's going to take us through that process from the least expensive and most uh, lowest type of care, maybe. Or easiest care. Easiest yeah. care to something that's a little bit more challenged challenging so take so it away we picked a pattern that's commonly used for sweaters it's by tin can knits and it's called the flax so or yeah flax i think it's i think it's a free pattern i, I think it sure. is too mm -hmm. um <laughs> frugal doesn't know if it's free <laughs> um so i'm not cheap i'm so, just frugal <laughs> there's a difference <laughs> there is a difference i cannot believe you go ahead there is a difference i just don't know it <laughs> Um, yeah. People have so much fun with the frugal part, like, you know, our little sandwich bags and bread closures. And oh, and by the way, I brought my cotton crochet thread to show what I use. <gasps> anyway, oh, actually... I cannot leave them waiting with bated breath about okay. all these okay. comparisons. So, we picked the extra large size. So, if you were knitting it, it's worsted weight, you would need 1,500 yards of yarn. So, if you decided to um, use easy-to-care for yarn, we just randomly went to some websites to see prices. So mm -hmm. we went to Knit Picks. Knit Picks has a line of yarn called Wool of the Andes, and it is two dollars and seventy nine cents a skein. So if you do the math out, you would need to buy fourteen skeins of that yarn. You could knit that sweater for thirty nine dollars. Isn't that crazy? That is reasonable. That is right. reasonable. I like the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> If you use Plymouth Encore, which is another workhorse mm -hmm. um, type of yarn, and most of these um, prices I either got from Webbs or um, Jimmy Beans or places mm -hmm. like that, um, Plymouth Encore, you would need eight skeins at $5.99 a skein. So you could get a sweater using Plymouth Encore for about $47. Machine washable. I think it is. Yeah, it and is. And is Panton's Classic Wool machine washable? It's 100% wool, and I don't think it's super washed. Okay, so that's I, you can get from Joanne Fabrics. So if you paid full price for it there, you would need seven skeins, $55. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I've ever paid full price for anything at Joanne's. No, not with their, all their um, advertising. Yeah, their app is fantastic. Yeah. Now, Cascade 220, um, they have one that's super wash and one that's not, um, but that's 9.50 a skein. So you could knit a sweater using Cascade 220 for about 
Um, $66. Did I say that for the last one? Patents was $55. Cascade to $20. $66. Now, moving into the yarns that need a little more care. So hand wash, lay flat to dry, black, things like that. So Malabrigo Rios, even though I don't, I did not realize that was super wash. I didn't know that either. Yeah, I've never super washed. I've never, never. washed it. Never. Okay. But okay. technically it is. A little higher price per skein now, $15.90. So it would cost you $127 to knit flax on Malabrigo Rios. Beautiful and, colorways, by the way. And would you um, say that that's a pretty average price for sweaters? I think so. I think so, too. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Babs, Big Silk. <laughs> Here's where, if you if you really want to be tempted, what is it about silk right now? I don't know. I love the feel of silk. Uh -huh. Now, those are bigger skeins, 8-ounce skeins. But you would need three of her hanks to do that sweater at $50, $58 a hank, at least from her website. That was the pricing I was getting. So 174 to knit mm -hmm. flax there. Okay. Now, Madeline Tosh, Tosh Vintage. I know, I know. Wow, I love it. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, whoa, girl. Again, <laughs> they call it a super wash. Okay. I, oh, I, really? I've got to believe it. I just I, can't okay. imagine machine washing Madeline Tosh, but I may have copied and pasted that wrong, too. Um, so $24 a hank. You would need eight of them, so that's $192. And then... Shibui seems to be hot right now. A lot of Shibui patterns. So if you use Shibui Drift, which is a merino silk combination, um, oh, can yes. you do that? I'm yes. gonna do that. Yeah. Hold with bated breath. There we go. You would need 14 skeins at $23 a skein. That sweater would cost you $322 to knit. So one pattern you could go from $40 a skein, and I'm sure there are even more yarns that you could do. What a nice range. I think so. So if it's I a think, sweater yes. you're going to wear for a lifetime in a mm -hmm. color that you like that is classic, and I think this pattern is classic, mm -hmm. um, it may be well worth the money um, to do it. But again, if I give it to somebody who's just going to throw it in the washing machine and dry it that way because that would work best for them, I can do it fairly reasonable that way and I think what I like most about this comparison Dawn is it fits every socioeconomic level right from our college kids or high school knitters to knitters who have more resources right so yeah. I think that's a wonderful feature of knitting there's something for everyone there's okay. room for everyone at the table yep you okay. know so thanks for doing that Right, they checked my math for me just to make sure I was right. So I didn't pay attention to that class we, either. We can't uh, trust your checkbook for math. <laughs> I was pretty sure math was a social class. So. As it was. Yeah, so if well, we have any other ideas for us to look at frivolous and frugal, we have a few more things we're looking at, but um, we don't mind doing no, comparisons. No, no like not at, at all. all. So. Not at all. I think that's it, and I think it really is time to wrap this episode <laughs> up. So again, we can be found on social media, yep. on Ravelry, and on Instagram. You have our Facebook yep. page. We appreciate that. And if you have any specific questions, don't hesitate to email us um, at either frivolousdawn at gmail.com or frugalmisspenny at gmail.com, and we'll be happy to answer your questions. <laughs> I have to remember to check that account. Uh, I just thought the same thing. I, I oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so I just, in full disclosure and transparency, <laughs> um, I work with technology all day long. I am in technology, a variety of programs, but for some reason, I cannot sustain my focus when it comes to social media. Yeah. So it is hard for me. It just doesn't make my boat float or my brain tick. Yeah. I may check mine driving uh, once you in a while. You think? Nuh-uh. -uh. I know. I need, to, I need to stop doing that. I know. I know. Do as I say, not as I do. That's now, right. Now, our podcasting schedule for the upcoming months mm. will be based on holidays. So um, we are, what, second week or third week in October right now. Mm -hmm. So we will be together for Thanksgiving. So we'll podcast then. We'll be together for Christmas. Um, so we may be like five weeks before the next. So Penny is hoping to do her interview with her husband that we will post. Big um, Mike. Again, just to some reminders, if you can think of some two-color shawl patterns, three-color shawl patterns, we would love those. And then if you had any opinion for Penny on those different colored pom-poms, she would love to hear that as well. So um, until next time. Yes. May your knitting be a sweet twist of frivolous and frugal. Bye, Thanks everybody. Thanks so much. Bye.